Hi, today I am going to give a brief introduction about differentiation. Um, um, basically, we're going to um, go over the definitions for derivative and some calculus rules we, we want to prove that and introduce a necessary condition, which is basically um, differentiability implies continuity. Um, so let's get started. Um, the first one is um, the definition, right? So we only consider the simplest case where f is a real value function. Um, its domain is a closed interval a, b, and it would be mapped to um, um, a real, real value number. Um, so let's uh, consider a point x in this closed interval a, b. And we want to define a function phi, where phi, um, the domain of phi is uh, open interval a, b, set minus the point x. And uh, it will also map any element in the domain to real value number. Um, so basically, phi t is the ratio f t minus f x over t, mi t minus x. And if you uh, look at the graph, so here, um, the black curvy line is um, our function f. And then here we have uh, close into what a, b. And then we have a specific point x. And we're wondering what is the derivative of f at this point x, right? And then we want to express in, um, so basically the definition for the de derivative of a function at a specific point of x is a limit. And later on, we'll, we'll, sh we'll show how is that definition um, is expressed in terms of phi t. Um, so basically, um, what I want to show you is um, the geometric um, interpretation of the function phi t. So remember, phi t is this, each, is this ratio. So let's first find f t, which is this point. And the fx is this point, right? So ft minus fx is uh, the, this length, and then t minus x is this length. So vt is really the tangent alpha. I, I marked here alpha is the angle right here. So that is our vt. And recall that t is any element in the set. OK. And then now we define. Um, the derivative of f evaluated at point x to be the limit as t, uh, the limit of phi t as t approach to x. Um, here, without any specifications, t could approach to x from left or from right. So here we just, uh, this notation is that t um, getting close to x. And, um, of course, we need to um, f prime x only meaningful when the limit, um, when this limit phi t as t uh, approach to x exists. Otherwise, uh, we say that the derivative of f at x does not exist. Okay, and there are some remarks. The first remark is, um, so the domain of f prime where f prime is the derivative of f. Um, its domain is a subset of the domain of f. It could be a um, strict subset of the domain of f. And um, the second remark is, if you look at the derivative of the f at the boundary of this domain, uh, of the domain of f, um, notice that Above here, when we define the derivative of f at a specific point, we uh, are, we didn't specify which direction, right? It could be left and uh, it should be both from left and right. But when x is um, at the boundary, for example, x is equal to a, and then we're wondering what is the derivative of f evaluated at a. So in that case, we, uh, we mean that the limit of v t as t approach to a from the right hand side. Why? Because it doesn't even make sense to talk about 
um, F T, where um, T is on the left of X, uh, where T is on the left of A, because F only defined on the close B. Uh, anywhere else, it does not define. So just keep in mind when we're talking about extremas, um, uh, the limit actually from one side. But anywhere else on the closed interval A, B, uh, I mean, except A and B, um, the limit should be defined in the sense of um, T approaching to X from both directions. And that the limit exists when the left limit equals the right limit. Okay, um, the third remark is, if X does not belong to the domain of F, then F prime of X does not exist. Um, so I just, here I wrote a simple um, example. Consider the function FX is a one over X. Of course, when X is equal to zero, one over X does not exist, right? Because the um, denominator cannot be equal to zero. Therefore, um, F does not have derivatives at zero. So basically, um, recall again the first remark that the, do, the domain of f prime is a subset of domain of f. So if f is not defined at a point, that means that point must be not included in the domain of f. Therefore, the domain of f prime must not in, contain that point. So everything kind of follows intuitively. Um, okay, and then we're gonna introduce our first theorem, which is a necessary condition for the existence of derivative. When we say necessary condition, we really mean that, um, so whenever we have uh, implications, right? So A implies B, um, that means B is a necessary condition for A, and A is sufficient condition for B. So here, we are claiming that F being differentiable implies F is continuous at, at, uh, at the point. So F is continuous at X is a necessary condition for F to be differentiable at X. Um, so let's see the proof, pretty short. So um, first of all, we assume f is differential at x, right? And then we want to show f is continuous. Uh, we just uh, use the definition for continuity. So let's fix epsilon, right? Uh, so this is a definition for continuity. Uh, right, so uh, First, observe this expression. So Ft minus Fx is equal to this. Here we're just divided by Ft minus x and times t minus x. And um, if we have limit, um, if we do the limit as t approach to x of this expression, the first, uh, the first term on the right-hand side, um, we know this exists because we're given the assumption that F is differentiable at X. And here, uh, it is pretty clear that the limit as the limit of T minus X as T converging to X is equal to zero. So this one converges to a real number and this one converges to zero. So together, right, the limit as, the limit of this expression as t approach to x is zero. Therefore, we have, so basically we're doing limit on this on the left side and limit on the right side, and then the equality still holds. Um, and then the limit of right-hand side becomes zero. That implies the limit of left-hand side is zero. Therefore, we have found, given epsilon large than zero, Um, we have shown um, that there exists delta large than zero such that the distance between these two is smaller than epsilon. Why? Because um, that is exactly 
um, what this expression is saying. So um, f is continuous at x. You, you don't have to do the delta epsilon thing. I think using just using the limit version of the definition for continuity is pretty straightforward for this proof. Um, so let's see what I got here. Oh, um, it's just a reminder that the differentiability and continuity, they're both local concept. So whenever we're saying that f is differentiable, um, we actually mean that f is differentiable at a specific point, a uh, specific point, um, and so does continuity, right? Um, and then once we focus on point, it's natural that we only consider something, um, anything around that point, which is called a neighborhood. And of course, if f is differentiable on an interval, let's say, or uh, differentiable at every point inside the interval e. Um, then we just say f is differentiable on e. Um, but just keep in mind, this could be useful sometimes that differentiability and continuity is a local concept. Um, uh, moreover, okay, this simple theorem is also a tool for us to check whether or not a function is differentiable or not, right? So um, we basically use a contrapositive version of the statement. So if we have, if we're given a function, we don't know whether or not it's differentiable, then we can first check um, if this function is continuous or not. So if it's, if it's not continuous, then we know f is not differentiable. Of course, if we, um, if we, if f is continuous, then we cannot say anything. We cannot imply anything about f is differentiable. So um, let me rephrase that. This theorem is good. It's a tool for recognizing whether or not a function is not differentiable or not. So if f is not continuous, then we know certainly that f is not differentiable. Cool. Okay, uh, let's see some examples. Um, so as I said, the reverse implication does not hold. And then one simple example that we see a lot of times uh, in this class is the absolute value, absolute function, right? So this is certain continuous. Um, we can use the definition uh, to check pretty easily, um, but the it, it is not differentiable at the point zero because at point zero, the left limit of phi t, notice that this is a phi t, is equal to one. And then the right, uh, sorry, this is the right side limit and this is left side limit. One is equal to one, one is equal to negative one, uh, which are not equal. So that means the limit does not exist. And this limit does not exist means the limit of phi t does not exist. And recall that the limit of phi t as t approach to point x is the definition for f prime zero. Therefore, f prime zero does not exist. Therefore, the function is not differentiable at the point um, zero. Okay, um, let's see the next example. So the piecewise function, it looks a little bit special. Uh, it is continuous if in check, just using the definition for continuity. Uh, what we want to show is this function is not differentiable, why? So again, we look at f prime of x, right? So because it is a piecewise function, so let's consider, let's compute what is the derivative, what is f prime? What is the function f prime when x is not equal to zero? Um, so I compute it here, it is equal to this expression. And on the other hand, when x is equal to zero, um, we need to use the definition of derivative, right? So here we write this. This is basically the uh, definition for f prime of x. And um, we plug in using 
we're just basically plugging f because f is given to be this function, right? Because t here approaches to x, uh, approaches to zero. So um, t is not equal to zero, right? So we use this part of definition for the function f. You might wonder why don't we just plug, um, why don't we just, Um, say that f prime of x is equal to zero. Um, let me think about that. I think when you are dealing with a piecewise function and um, this is defined at a specific point x is equal to zero, um, but differentiation at the point is really a limiting behavior as t approach to zero. So we should use the limit expression for the derivative of prime of x. Um, otherwise, um, so if you, for example, if you, um, so f prime of x is not equal to zero when x is equal to zero, why? Um, it is kind of like if you evaluate, if you first, firstly evaluate the function at a point and you get a value, a numerical value, right? For example, if x is equal to pi over two, right? So what do you get? You get, if x is equal to pi over two, uh, sorry, two over pi. So if x is two over pi is sine one over x is sine pi over two, which is equal to one. And then one times pi over, one times two over pi is two over pi. So this is the value two over pi when x is equal to two over pi. Um, and you cannot, so, what is the derivative of the constant two over pi? It is zero, but there is a mistake why I was saying that because you can, the derivative of a function evaluated at a point should be in the procedure that first you find the ex expression of function f prime, and then you evaluated that function at the point you are interested. You cannot evaluate using f and then do the derivative because it's always gonna be zero. So that's why I say this is equal to zero. But instead we need to use the derivative expression and then convince the reader in this way. Okay, so here I just plug in f, right? And then um, this is just the uh, algebra. So it becomes sine one over t. Um, but sine one over t, we claim this limit does not exist. Um, and let's see why it does not exist. We call the definition for limits, right? There are many, there are delta epsilon, um, but another definition for limit to exist, the existence of limit is, uh, for example, if the limit of xn is equal to a, where a is a real number, that means, um, oh, that is the limit of a sequence. Now we're considering about limit of functions. So a little bit different. Let me think, um, what to say? So, um, so if I want to say a, a limit of a function, um, if, so the limit of function at point A, for example, is exist if and only if for every sequence Xn converges to A, Fxn should also, should converges to Fa. So let me write this down. Um, so the limit of F, uh, the limit of f um, s 
So here what I'm saying is the limit as t converges to zero of Ft should be equal to Fa if and only if for every sequence Tn converges to A, Ftn converges to Fa. And um, right, so what do we want to show? Because I claim that this limit does not exist. So to support my claim, I just need to show a counterexample. And the counterexample could be, uh, I can find, I can try to find two different sequences that both converges to A, but sine one over Tn, for example, I have two sequences Tn and Tm, right? So sine one over Tn, uh, the limit, as n goes to infinity does not equal to sine one over tm as m goes to infinity. So once I show that, then I'm done with showing um, this limit does not exist. Okay, so that's quickly. So here are the two sequences I found. Uh, one is two over pi times four k plus one, and the other one is one over pi k. And then both of them converges to zero. So uh, we just need to check if we, we just need to check whether or not the sequence sine one over TK converges to the same uh, limit as the sequence sine one over TM. And as I computed here, this is equal to one versus the other one is equal to zero. Um, clearly those two are not equal. So they're not the same. Therefore, we conclude that the limit as t equals to zero of, uh, of sine one over t does not exist. So let's clear this out. Uh, because that does not exist, we can say f prime of x, um, x t does not exist. So our conclusion for this example is that when x is not equal to zero, we have the expression explicitly expression for f prime of x. But when x is equal to zero, um, f prime of x um, is, is undefined. Therefore, um, the function f is not differentiable everywhere. So, um, even though the function is continuous, it is not differentiable. Therefore, it is another complete example to support our claim that the continuity does not imply differentiability. Okay. Uh, the next thing is I want to mention about the rules for computing derivatives. So uh, three common operations is um, the summation, um, multiplication, and division, right? So what is the derivative of f plus g uh, the function f plus g. So it is equal to, as you could expect, right, it's equal to f prime plus g prime. Um, and then the second one is called the primary here, already very familiar with this. And the third one is the, uh, is we call it log in high high low minus, uh, divided by low squared, right? Um, now we need to, uh, we want to prove that indeed, True. Okay. So let's do the proof of one. So, uh, which is here. So we define function h is equal to f plus g. Um, since f and g are both from a, uh, a the closing the way a b to real uh, to the real line, um, this function h uh, is also from the closing the way a b to the real line. And let's just apply the definition of um, um, derivative, right? So if we want to know h prime, which is if we want to know the derivative of f plus g, uh, we 
um, get, just write out the definitions, right? So this definition is equal to this one because we plug in the definition for H and uh, rearrange everything. We can see this part is a prime of X and this part, um, the here uh, action, so the distribution property for limit operations, right? So this is equal to the limit of uh, F, F t minus Fx divided by t minus x, and this is the limit of gt minus gx divided by t minus x. So we have f prime of x plus g prime of x, which is equal to h prime of x. So um, here, uh, I think it's better to express in this way. So h prime of x is equal to this where here is really the definition, right? Um, therefore, we finish the first one. And then let's see the second one. So second one is the product rule, right? Again, uh, it is pretty common to um, define a new function. You will actually see a lot more later uh, for, for, for different purposes, but um, it is a common trick. Um, from my point of view that um, if we want to do something, we define a new function and then we focus on showing some properties of that new function. Um, so here we define h is equal to f times g. And again, we uh, here are just the definitions and then we plug in the definition of h. And here we do the mathematician's favorite trick, which is uh, plus a zero, right? And just this is a zero. And we rearrange uh, using the algebra, we obtain this. And then again, using the distribution derivative, uh, distribution property of the limit operations. So when I was doing, uh, when I was uh, writing this proof, um, I was actually, um, because I think it would be hard if I don't know um, the answer, which is this. So what drives me or what really helped me well when I was writing this proof is I know what I want at the end. So um, that's why I quickly figured out um, to minus this and plus this um, expression in this specific formula. Um, anyway. Um, so that's for number two, and let's look at number three. Um, so again, this definition, right? And then we plug in because h is equal to f divided by g. And here, um, we might need a little bit of observations because we just rewrite the numerator into a slightly different way. Um, those two are equal. And check. Um, and then what we did is I uh, switch. So I, I observe the numerator and denominator. I switch this and this to obtain uh, something looks looks new. Uh, why do I want this? Because again, I know what I want. Um, it, it it could be. I think it might be more difficult. Don't know what is. Um, what is the end result? Because I would I would given this end result, I know exactly what I want. So this could serve as a hint, right? Because I know at prime of x is uh, the limit as t converges to x of f t minus f x divided by t minus x. Therefore, I know some the step above must evolve this expression. So that's why where I got the inspiration while I was writing this. Uh, so anyway, we um, we got this expression. We arrange the term. We get um, so again here I uh, I minus and so I minus gx fx. And then plus uh, divided by t minus x and plus gx 
times fx divided by t minus x. Uh, so here is, um, I omitted some step, but it's again using the mathematician third trick, um, basically plus to zero. And um, therefore I got this expression. And now things become very clear. So because the limit, again, the distribution derivative uh, property of the limit. So this is a prime of x. This is g prime of x. Therefore we obtain what we want, what we want. Okay, then so we're done. The next uh, is, uh, I just want to show some applications for the operations that we just proved. Uh, the first one is, if f is a constant function, then its derivative is equal to zero everywhere. Um, this will become handy when uh, later proved because we use the fact a lot. Um, so it's very simple, let's just use uh, the definitions, right? Because f t and f x are the same, it is zero in the numerator. So therefore, the limit of pt is equal to the limit of zero, which is zero. And then the second one is the uh, very common, uh, very common, uh, I think that we could call this a polynomial, right? So in calculus, we know f prime of x is in this expression, and then we want to prove that. So recall that we just learned about uh, product rule. So um, my intuition why I look at this is to use um, induction, induction. So um, the first, the base case is when m is equal to one, um, and then we proved it. Um, and then for the second case, um, it wasn't clear for me. So I decided to write out the second step using the, um, using the product rule that we proved above. So this is also, um, so f prime of x is equal to two x. This confirms our claim. So our claim holds at the case x is equal to two, uh, at the case m is equal to two. And therefore, uh, we use induction. So this is the induction hypothesis, and then we use the induction um, and then get a desired result. Okay, and then the next one is a chain rule. So, so far, we did uh, prove um, three basic operations. The first one is summation, second one is product, the third one is division, and then now it's the chain rule. So again, uh, we assume f is differentiable and x is any point in the closed interval, which is also the domain of the function f. Um, and we also assume that the image of f is contained in an interval i on the real line. And because of the chain rule, so there are two functions to keep in mind. The second function is g and then domain of g is i. So g is a function from i to r, and then g is differentiable at the point at x. Then the claim is that um, the function h, which is defined in this way, is called the composition, um, has the derivative expression as g prime of x times f prime of x. So, um, to prove this, the first step we're going to do is we phrase the differentiability. So this is the definition for f prime of x. And we know the difference between um, vt and f prime of x converges to zero as t converges to x. So therefore, we have this Okay, we can do this, um, by the way, we can do this without writing any norm or um, writing the absolute value because um, both of them are scalar. So we don't care because it could be positive, it could be negative, but at the end, it must have converges to zero. If this is a complex value, this is a complex value, then 
basically you are living in C, right? Not R. So C is um, equivalent as R2. So you must, uh, when you keep in mind, when you evaluate this, the distance, you must uh, use the absolute, you must evaluate the as absolute value of the difference of those two. And if you are, uh, if those are vectors, then you must evaluate the difference between those two vectors in terms of the norm, the Euclidean norm. Okay, so uh, we define ut to be this, and we know that ut converges to zero as t converges to x. And here we um, basically just rewrite everything. Um, and here we plug in the definition of et. And the next step is um, move t minus x on the right-hand side to the left, so we obtain this expression. Um, so we can, since g and f are differentiable and they are very similar, right? So we can also apply this observation of function f to function g except let's just change the notation a little bit. So instead of t, we have s. Instead of uh, x, fx, we have g of x because we want this point to be the point that, so this is the point that f has derivative, right? And this is the point that g has derivative. Um, and here, of course, uh, basically the same. Um, so now our preparations are, are good. Uh, let's prove the claim, right? So we're interested in h prime. Uh, and by definition, it is equal to this limit. And by definition of h, we can just write this out. And notice that this expression is exactly the same as this one, which we just derived a couple seconds ago. Uh, where s, or where, um, so f t is in the same row as s. Therefore, we can just like plug in this, right? So let me uh, write out. Uh, so this is one and this is two, and this is by two, right? So we obtain this expression. And once we obtain this expression, we got this long expression. Notice that, oh, sorry, once we um, apply uh, two on this, we obtain this, right? And then if you observe t minus fx, this is in, uh, by one, it is equal to this expression. So let me write down by one. And then just plug it in we obtain this long expression, right? And some terms canceled out. So you only have this left. And then now we use distribution to property of the limit operations again, because, um, so if you look at the definition of u, where u is equal to this, right? And then both of the functions are continuous. Um, why it is continuous? Because this is continuous and this is just a point. Um, so the limit of t converges to x of u t is equal to, um, yes. Um, so we actually, um, Right, I was, uh, we have already showed, yes, this is just by definition that ut converges to zero as t converges to x by, by this definition. Sorry, not about the continuity of ut. So by this definition, we have ut converges to zero as t converges to x. And therefore we have this equal to zero and we have uh, this is equal to zero because v as converges to zero as s converges to x. So we have uh, this expression, um, we write, we get this expression. And this is what we uh, want at the end, right? So we finish um, the proof of change. Um, 
So that is uh, the definition of very basic properties. So I like a very brief outline on top, just to remind myself uh, what I need to review. Um, so what we did, right? We, um, sorry, so outline. So the first thing we introduce is definition of f prime x. And then second one is differentiability implies continuous. And then, and then we also introduce some um, uh, counter examples to show the um, inverse implication is incorrect. Um, so basically we have been looking at fx is equal to f one over x, fx is equal to x times sine one over x. And if x is not equal to zero, otherwise. And then we learned about f plus g prime f times g prime f divided by t. And what else we learned? Um, we learned chain. And I think that's basically everything we covered in this short video. Uh, so next time my review, I can just look at the header. Um, and try to recall without looking at my notes. Okay, thank you for uh for uh thank you for watching and let me know if I made any mistakes.